Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 587, Breast Cancer and Hormone Replacement Therapy. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about a very common subject to hear discussed in my office during our consultations, and that is the um, risk or benefit of taking estrogen or taking estrogen and progesterone or taking estrogen and testosterone um, when you already have had breast cancer or when you are at risk because of your family history or because you're obese or have diabetes and that places you at risk for breast cancer. So we, we are going to talk about both of those situations, people who have never had breast cancer but are worried about getting it and people who have had breast cancer and they need something for the symptoms of menopause. So, so let's start with, um, we will start with, people who have never had breast cancer and worry about the risk of getting it if they take estrogen. So first of all, there are many kinds of estrogen, and one of the kinds of estrogen that is higher risk for breast cancer is oral estrogen. It is also higher risk for uh, getting um, blood clots because the, the pill that you take is goes through the liver and is and it stimulates a lot of clotting factors. If you don't take it orally, it doesn't do that. So we have found that it is safer for people who have uh, a risk for blood clots, risk for breast cancer, to actually take non-oral estrogen patches or pellets like what I do, or vaginal tabs or vaginal creams. Those are safer than taking an oral estrogen like Premarin or est- Estradiol. Now, when we look at the risk of getting breast cancer, we, there is uh, the 100,000 women year, it's women years, not women, but women years study, and they uh, found, believe it or not, that uh, if you took nothing, now just remember these numbers, if you take nothing, then your risk if in a in a um, population of 100,000 women years, your risk of getting breast cancer is 283. So remember, 283. If you are somebody who doesn't want to take estrogen, just wants testosterone, like we do with pellets, your risk is 238. That's the lowest risk and lower than taking nothing. So... Taking nothing was 283 per 100,000 women years. If you take testosterone, it lowers your risk to 238. If you take testosterone, estradiol, and progestin, and they were using oral estrogens, your risk is 293. So if you take testosterone alone, 238. If you take testosterone with estrogen and progesterone, 293. Progestin. And if you take just estrogen and progestin, it's 380. So if you think about that, it is safer to take testosterone alone than to take nothing. Your risk goes down from taking nothing. Then your risk goes back up if you're taking the progestins, Estrogen and progestin, they did not give me a number for just estrogen and testosterone alone, which I believe is lower than the testosterone, estrogen, and progestin. However, I can't, I can't document that. 
The, um, but if you're taking testosterone, estradiol, like we give in pellets, and then we give you a separate progesterone, which is bioidentical, that is not as high a risk as the progestin. So you're saving some risk by doing it that way. If you take estrogen oral and progestin, which is what they used, that really is your highest risk of breast cancer. I don't, in this, it doesn't say that the estrogen and the progestin cause breast cancer, but that's what it implies. It may be that the breast cancer is so small that when, when we start hormones, we can't see it on mammogram. And then if you have testosterone, that improves your immune system. And your immune system then fights the cancer and stops it. If you are taking nothing, then that little cancer will show up at some point. So that's why that risk would be higher. If you add um, estrogen and progesterone and it is an estrogen receptor positive cancer, then those cancers, and they didn't, they didn't take those out or take them in into this study. This was done in, it was actually done in 2004 by um, Demi <laughs> Constantine Demidikakis. He's Greek. Um, so he, uh, they were just using oral estrogens and progestins at that time. So I can't really give you another, um, another number for the occurrence of, uh, just estrogen and testosterone. However, it looks as if this was, um, this was estrogen receptor positive cancers and that they were actually reporting uh, the findings of it over 10 years, and it ended up being 100,000 women years. This was done in South Australia, but Australia is a little bit like the U.S. It has every kind of genetic type, so I don't think the genetic types are just one population. It's more like everybody's there, kind of like it's a melting pot like um, the U.S. So the conclusion is that if you're at risk, the best thing you could do would be to take testosterone alone. And then the next best thing would be to take estrogen and testosterone, which would be what people in my practice take if they've had a hysterectomy. Because you don't need progesterone, I don't care, or progestin, if you've had a hysterectomy. It's, it's just not necessary. So that is something that we have not taught our gynecologists, and gynecologists still give people with hysterectomies progestins and estrogen, and that increases their risk. Because the progestin is the bad guy, not the estrogen. That's what's increasing the risk in these studies. Now, progesterone that I give my patients, that's why I give my patients progesterone, bioidentical, either oral, sublingual progesterone, does not increase the risk of breast cancer. So, if you look at people, let's go to the other side, people who have already had breast cancer. When I get patients that have already had breast cancer and they're miserable because they had to go off their estrogen um, and they haven't had, they didn't take testosterone, but they're just miserable and they see an oncologist, 10 to 15 years ago, those oncologists didn't know that testosterone actually lowers the recurrence rates of breast cancer in people who have already had it because it stimulates your immune system. It improves your T cells and your T killer cells, and they go in and gobble up any kind of cells that become breast cancer and get rid of them. So that's the, the role of testosterone and why it actually helps people not have a recurrence of their breast cancer. Um, they used to just say, no, you can't give them anything, which made, which was a disregard for the, for the, patient's quality of life. They couldn't have sex because they were so their vagina was so dry. They had no sex drive. They had no muscle mass. They were tired, fatigued, sleepless because they had hot flashes all night. This was a miserable situation. So um, I like to think that I helped train some of the oncologists to show them that giving testosterone, especially in pellet form, to people who have had breast cancer that is estrogen receptor positive, can prevent them from getting a recurrence. And now they are accepting of this, and they even send me patients 
who have had breast cancer with estrogen receptors for just testosterone replacement. And what the patients get out of this is a lot. They get a lot of the symptoms that you would normally associate with, hot, with low estrogen. They also, they get treatment with the testosterone. It actually helps the low estrogen symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, dry vagina. The testosterone crosses over and helps those tissues actually become more normal. Uh, this is something that not only does it prevent the recurrence, but it actually treats the symptoms and improves the quality of life, which is really what my practice is all about. You don't have to live in a miserable way in general. If you've had breast cancer and you have symptoms of menopause, testosterone can step in and take over and help you with those symptoms and not put you at further risk. Some patients actually will not have the response to testosterone of thickening the, the vaginal tissue so that they can have comfortable sex. In those cases, I have not gotten any pushback from the oncologist at giving local, small amount of local cream estrogen that's put around the vagina and just slightly in the vagina so that it estrogenizes it and makes it wetter and stretchier and more comfortable for, for these patients to have sex. And by the way, you should be able to have sex your whole life. It should not be something that you hit menopause and like some of my patients are told by their gynecologist, why do you want to have sex after 50? I mean, that absolutely is just improper training. We should be able to have sex the rest of our lives. We keep people from having sex until they're married or until they're uh, mature. So, and we and, and we have to wait in in our early life. Why shouldn't we be able to have sex the rest of our lives when we have uh, significant others? So, in the end, what this really means is you don't have to be afraid of not being able to be treated if you do get breast cancer. You can be treated with testosterone. And I would also give you spironolactone to keep you from getting all facial hair and acne because sometimes without estrogen, that's what happens. But that's not a reason not to take, um, not to take testosterone. We can, we can fix those symptoms, and those, aren't, those are just, those are pretty simple with spironolactone. And if you're afraid of getting breast cancer, then if you take testosterone only, you will still feel better, have, have better bodies, better sleep, better, uh, better sex, better sex drive, and that'll lower your chance of getting breast cancer. And if you uh, add estrogen to it in a non-oral way and don't take a progestin, take a progesterone if you have a uterus, and don't take anything if you don't have a uterus, then you're not going to be placing yourself at higher risk. It's about the type of estrogen you take, the type of progesterone you take, and not a progestin. It's about how, how it's delivered to your body, oral versus non-oral. And it's about whatever your risk is from your family history um, and your, your risk factors you already have because cancer loves sugar. So if you have diabetes, you're at much higher chance of having one cell change into a cancer and grow because it loves sugar. If you don't, if, that's especially if you don't manage your blood sugar like you should with diabetes. That also is a, a risk factor is also becoming obese. When you're obese, you make a lot of estrone, the old lady estrogen. And estrone is not good for breast cancer. It stimulates it. So we always try to get estrone as low as possible. In any case, these are the reasons that I make the recommendations that I do. And they are backed with research, and they're now kind of coming to, in 2022, we're finally, everybody's kind of waking up and realizing that women need to have a quality of life. And whatever way we have to get there, um, we should be helping them get there as physicians. And that, I mean, I lived it. I know what it's like not to have hormones, and it's terrible. I mean, some people, are it's worse than others. Um, I don't think I could live my life. I certainly wouldn't be doing what I do now had I not gotten hormones. Um, and we need women to take care of families, to take care of their jobs, to take care of their grandchildren. I mean, if we, 
if they are not functioning, if they are, if all of the women past menopause are um, not functioning as partners, not functioning as parents or grandparents, or as workers, we'll, uh, half our country, half of the women in our country will be out of the workforce or out of the ability to help their children take care of their children. I mean, we depend on grandparents for that. So this is to help you make a decision and not to be run by fear. Fear is destructive. Fear is not a good motivation. Um, it keeps you from thinking. So you should think about these facts and remember that more people get breast cancer who take nothing than women who take testosterone and testosterone and estrogen. So you're not saving yourself anything by doing nothing. You're making a choice. And that choice is not health, a healthy choice. So please remember this when you're talking to your gynecologist. And make sure that you make your feelings known about what you want to do for your menopausal symptoms. And if they don't, if they don't um, do testosterone therapy in a non-oral form, then find a doctor who does. Because that's what you really need. Please join me next week. Um, I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but it'll be interesting. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.